What's up guys, the snowman here. I've got a fun tennis video planned for today. It's my tennis court speeds explained. The ATP and WTA tours use what's called CPI or court pace index to measure how quickly a particular court surface is playing. I figured it'd be useful to go through some of the bigger tournaments, the grand slams, the 1000 level events and see how the court speeds measure up. Of course, different players play better or worse depending on how quickly or slowly the surface is playing. So let's dive into some CPI stats. So what is court pace index? Essentially CPI is calculated from the coefficient of friction. So the force pressing the ball and the court together and the coefficient of restitution that's how much the ball compresses on impact. This is the mathematical equation for CPI. In this formula, U is the coefficient of friction and E is the coefficient of restitution. In simple terms, CPI measures the speed of the ball just before impact with the court surface and the speed at which it leaves the surface. This is our way of measuring how quickly certain courts are playing. It was first introduced in 2016 by Tennis TV, but since then used regularly to measure the court speeds at the biggest tournaments in the world, the majors, masters 1000s, year end finals, Let's look at those speeds now. Really interesting graph here. This is the court power index for all of the top events in 2017. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a complete listing of all tournaments from a more recent year, but I know for sure that these figures are accurate. Again, 2017, but at least they don't change speeds too much from year to year. Now let's focus on the four majors first. A few things that jump out to me. The Australian Open, the fastest of the four majors, 42 on the court pace index. That's pretty much considered a medium fast hard court combine that with the heat in the Australian summer and you have a very quick playing surface the ball flies through the air in Melbourne uh, that's allowed a player like Novak Djokovic to dominate at the Australian Open so much throughout his career Roland Garros for the French Open substantially slower than the Aussie Open just a 21 on the CPI scale of course that's not too shocking as clay courts typically play slower than hard courts uh, as the tennis ball makes impact with the clay particles tend to get stuck in the ball causing more friction and slowing things down all the clay courts defined as slow courts uh, that's anything measured at 29 or lower Wimbledon is the lone grass major and the only grass tournament on this chart CPI rating of 37 so a little bit slower than the Australian Open but still considered a medium court really almost a medium fast court the other thing about grass is that the ball skids more it stays lower so the slice is much more effective on grass as opposed to clay where the ball bounces higher and then the US Open our second hard court major Major 35.4 is its rating, so a medium court. That surface in New York tends to be a little grittier than the Aussie Open. That's why it's a little bit lower. Although as tournaments take place over one to two weeks, the surfaces do tend to speed up as the acrylic paint or concrete wears off and there's less friction. So for the majors, the rank of speeds goes Australian is the fastest, then Wimbledon, US Open, and the French Open is the slowest. Also, here's another graphic for the Australian and US Open. As I mentioned, the CPI does change from year to year. You can see here that both majors have gotten substantially quicker quicker since 2017. Aussie Open would be considered extremely quick in 2021 and the US Open a borderline fast court according to CPI as well in 2020. Uh, again, I wish it was easier to find some of these numbers from year to year, but it, it does require some digging. Back to our other graphic for the Masters 1000s. Uh, those are our other nine biggest tournaments of the year. Indian Wells is interesting 27.4. Definitely one of the slowest hard courts you'll see on tour. Indian Wells known for both slow and windy conditions out there in the California desert. Miami wasn't as quick as I thought it would be in 2017. Another hard court at 30.3, classified as a medium slow court. I would have thought that would have been more like a medium court, but I guess the heat does make it a touch quicker despite the surface. The next three events, Monte Carlo, Madrid, and Rome are three big Masters 1000 tournaments on clay. All pretty slow. 24.9 for Monte Carlo, 20.9 for Madrid, and 22 in Rome. And the coolest thing here for me is that Madrid seems slow because of the CPI, but the elevation in Madrid, almost 700 meters or about a half a mile up, because of that elevation, the air is thinner and the courts tend to play quicker. The ball really flies through the air in Madrid, so it's not a typical clay court. Then we have the summer hard courts, Montreal slash Toronto and Cincinnati. Canada, a medium court at 36.3, uh, Cincy 33.6. I was actually really shocked about the Cincinnati event. People talk about that tournament like it's one of the fastest on tour, so I was surprised to see it was slower than the US Open, Montreal, Australia, etc. And then the two late season hard 
hard court, Shanghai and the Paris indoors, Shanghai at a mercurial 42.9, the fastest court on our graph here in 2017, uh, Paris a medium court at 37.5, pretty ideal playing conditions with the indoor arena there. And finally, we have the ATP Finals, the last tournament of the season, also an indoor event, it used to be played in London from 09 to 2020, now it's played in Turin, Italy, pretty fast conditions at the O2 Arena, 42.1 here. And this is a look at how the CPI has changed from 2012 to 2018 at the ATP Finals. It used to be more of a medium pace court. Nowadays, it's a medium fast, but it's always fun to me to look at how the CPI and the court conditions change at a particular venue from year to year. Uh, can definitely help explain certain results and trends, why specific players play better at certain venues. So many variables in the game of tennis. Thanks a lot for watching my uh, tennis court speeds explained video hope you enjoyed it uh, if you did please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the snowman sports media for more ongoing tennis content and uh, preview videos i'll be back very soon cheers